Well, hello and welcome everybody to our next podcast. We are honored as always to have good brother and fellow mensch, Eli Weber, uh, join us today for the podcast. We're going to be sharing information about what we both have uh, observed and picked up with our resources and share that with you folks as a continuation of the movement here, geopolitical and financial. As always, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe and share so that others can gain the knowledge you have been afforded. Uh, Brother Eli, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you back. Thanks, John. It's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> Definitely. Likewise, buddy. Always enjoy your YouTube uh, lives that you do virtually every morning. I, I, I always enjoy watching you because that's how you and I started a few years back, as you know. So um, like we discussed off camera, we're going to kind of do a split thing today where, you know, you'll share what you know, and I'll do the same, and we'll just kind of go back and forth and see where the conversation takes us. So um, from what you have gathered from both, um, you know, Yahweh and your knowing, and also just the places that you get your information, what have you picked up uh, insofar as, we'll start with the geopolitical front. They've announced today, I believe, that Hamas and Israel have come up with a peace agreement, but you and I both know that this reneges all the time, and we're still watching for Israel to make their grave mistake with the secret nuclear power plants in Iran, which will in turn as you know free up Iraq. What what have you gained on, on this front? Yeah, I I totally. I mean, I I take a totally different approach to uh, Israeli politics. I was very interested in it, maybe ten five years ago, but. I find it completely a, a distraction. I I don't I don't think we're seeing. I don't think it's Israel. I don't think it's Hamas. I think it's it's the deep state versus humanity. That's how I I that's how I would see this thing. So I believe that Hamas and parts of the Israeli government are on the same page. They're getting paid by the same deep state players. So for me. I'm I it just it's just it's just a non it's I'm not really that interested I mean most most Jews are biting their nails and feeling like the end is near and they're just they're really involved with it. I just think it's just a total distraction event and the deep state is trying to promote World War three and I you know I see right through it I don't I'm not into it I don't think it's Arabs and Israelis or Iran I don't believe any of that stuff I think it's simply satan versus god and satan represents has many he's a shapeshifter so he can uh, represent himself as a hamas terrorist as a uh, a guy on an airplane in 9 11 or as uh, an israeli prime minister it's just different different shape-shifting versions of the same uh satanist thing that is really trying to defeat humanity i i don't i don't know if that makes sense to many people i do, does what i make uh, does that make sense to you what i just said well i mean i think what you're saying what i hear you saying eli is it's it's you know it's basically different color feathers of the same bird you know that they're working kind of in cahoots and you know i agree with you in the sense that uh, i am not dissuaded by this peace deal because again you know this has happened before and then it gets reneged and and i do agree that it's a big distraction point to get people to think that all is quiet on the western front and then boom, something happens. So yeah, I, overall, I, I agree with you. But but I, I don't even, I mean, I don't even see it as being that, um, that deep. I just, I mean, I don't think, I don't, we're not dealing with Iran. We're not dealing with Israel. We're not dealing with Russia. I, in my opinion, we're simply dealing with, you're either a Satanist deep state or your humanity. And yeah. there's, for me, there's, the, the people say, well, what about the gray hats? I'm just like, there's no such thing to me. You're either a white hat or a, or a black hat. You're either with humanity or with the deep, deep state. I mean, there are people who go back and forth. I mean, I'm sure they have their function, but I, you know, they're like, <clears throat> somebody said to me the other day that <clears throat> um, Adam Ian, I think on, uh, on X said that he feels that the military are all, gray hats meaning they're all they are interested in collecting their pension it's it's a job to them and they're not going to do anything i i totally disagree i think there's there's a there's military people that are doing this for the right reasons and the white hats are working hard underground to eliminate this you know this 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 the reptilian the satanist the the hybrid enemy and so I, 
I don't, you know, for you know, for a couple of years now, I haven't really fallen for the lie that, you know, Israel versus Hamas or any of this nonsense. It's it's really just it's it's really a cover up really to to the economic transition that I think is taking place. They want us to all look over there and not mm -hmm. and not here. And they 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 want to perpetuate their fiat system and they will use any excuse to get us to war with each other, to you know, instigate any kind of conflict and then divide and conquer. But I don't think humanity is going to fall for it anymore. Yeah, I mean, in that deeper sense, when you talk on, from that perspective, I, I as a coming from a, a Christian standpoint, I would agree with you in the sense of, you know, we refer to in the New Testament, Ephesians 6, 12, right, which is we don't wrestle again. Well, I, I'll tell you, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, mighty powers in the dark world and evil spirits in the heavenly places, which is the iteration of what you're talking about, spiritual warfare, dark to light. So in that sense, I totally agree with you. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I had an interview last week with Jim Willie, and he was saying much the same thing that a lot of these military guys are being, uh, you know, whether they're, you know, corporals or, um, you know, colonels, lieutenants, whatever their ranking is, you know, that uh, the alliance, as it were, is working with a lot of these guys and saying, look, we're going to demote you a couple of notches because we need your help to get rid of the nefarious factions in the military. And of course, the swamp, basically drain the swamp. And if you don't, we're going to court martial you. And those are those are his words, not mine. He has much deeper connections than I do in that respect. So as I say that to say that he's sort of correlating his information corroborates in line with a lot of what your your fundamental ethos is in this. So I think it's, it's, these things all sort of interconnect. And so it's good that you're sharing what you are, you know, because I think there, there's validity to that. Um, so thank you for that. The, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is a very interesting article that I read about, I don't know, within a week or two ago, we put on our telegram. And as you know, if you've been over there, there's a lot of information that's shared. So it's hard to keep up. Uh, but apparently a lot of New Yorkers, and I know you're in the greater New York City area, a lot of New Yorkers are just not paying their taxes flat out. And some folks are just nationwide are just either not doing it or just unwilling or unable to pay their bills altogether. And so on that front, I was just kind of curious to see what, what you've gleaned or what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I wouldn't even consider paying taxes. I mean, I wouldn't even go, you know, I mean, this is for a couple of years already. When when I took out my, my tax free retirement fund mm -hmm. and they took out 20% off the top. And then once I had my money, they wanted another like 50%. That's when I said, I I'm out, man. You guys, I can't, you're, you're telling me this is my tax-free thing that I spent my 20 years working in, in the worst schools in New York to, to accumulate a little bit of money and you want it all. I just, so I, I don't pay taxes. I don't have health insurance. I'm not interested in seeing any of these after what they did with this. I'm like, I don't want, I don't trust doctor. I, why would I go into, into a doctor's office? Well, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, now this is problematic and I, I'm not saying that everyone should follow what I do in that, like right now I'm looking to buy a, a house and the banks won't touch me. So I'm like, okay, so I'll, I, I have to pay cash, which it, you know, is fine with me because I have some, you know, some things, but lawsuits really. Uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't even think about paying taxes anymore. Yeah, I totally. I mean, if you... You look at the tax code the IRS even put together going back to 2000, there's videos out there. We put them out there. They've been circulating that the IRS says that individuals, you know, people can argue this all day long, but they really haven't done the research. A lot of them to know that this is the case because we've been inculcated to believe over generations that we have to, and nobody even very few people question it. Uh, but I, I was encouraged to see that a lot of New Yorkers uh, and I'm sure a lot of Americans standing up and saying enough is enough because people are tired of their perception of their money going to the deep state Ukraine. And, and again, Jim Willie also highlighted this, that it's not really going to Ukraine at all. It's going right back. It's a money laundering operation. Ukraine has been just like Taiwan, just like many countries around the world have been basically harvesting centers for money laundering, pedophilia, human trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, weapons grabs, you know, not to mention the, uh, resources a lot of these countries have that they don't even realize to the extent they have it you know it's it's really like you say a dark to light and it's it's a mindset attitudinal correction 
that uh, a lot of these countries believe they're poor when they're actually rich because they've been brainwashed to believe that. Even here in America, we think there's a, a, a middle and, a, and a, a middle class, an upper class, and a lower class. That's not true at all. There's really a wealth class, but it's just been we've been put into these categories uh, to keep us down so they can they can steal from us. And as that information comes out, Eli, as you know, more and more. It's it's gonna it's like watching dominoes fall down a line as as you know people hit the truth at their own time frames right and so it'd be interesting to see how that goes uh, so then turning our attention to uh, some other stuff I you talk a lot about this on your show and I'm glad you address it because that means we don't have to deal with it all the time and Dr Scott does it as well and I'm referring to Nasara Jasara um, a lot of people have opinions and queries about where we are. And I see this question come up in a lot of chat rooms, like, where are we in the Nassara process? What is your opinion on that? Where do you see us? Are, are we already in Nassara and it's rolling out in, in waves? Are we are we waiting on something? What's your take on that? Yeah, I, I it, my, my instinct is that we were already there. I mean, I think the whole birth certificate scam system uh, is probably been, you know, disrupted to some extent. But I, I, it seems to me that we're just waiting for the Iraqi dinar to revalue. And once that, that happens, all the other dominoes are going to come down fast. I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, I, I, wanted, I really wanted to kind of pick your brains about the economic system because what I'm seeing, what I'm thinking I'm seeing is the war is playing out in the markets in terms of silver value, in terms of gold value, in terms of the dinar, in terms of the Dow, let's say the Dow, as you know, but I mean, the whole the market in general, what I think is happening behind the scenes is that the 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 deep state is propping up the Dow. They're they're digging into their funds of the International Monetary Fund into their vaults of cash. I don't think they're they're being allowed to print new cash, but I think they have tremendous cash reserves from stealing from us for so many decades. And my suspicion is that the the um, fiat system is being propped up by these cash reserves. So too Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin and Tether are being propped up by uh, illicit cash slush funds. But I, I think the White Hats using what they using their game theory idea, using the idea that al allow the enemy to destroy itself, allow the enemy to do what it does. So I think the the White Hats have the attitude that they're letting they're watching as the deep state pilfers their their storehouses and eventually they'll they will reach a point where there's just no more cash and that's when hopefully before that the, the things will be reversed but but yeah but i i i i think that's what's going on behind the scenes they're propping up bitcoin they're propping up the uh the the stock market and and the white hats are getting them to spend all this uh cash that they've had uh decades to accumulate mm, absolutely now you said you wanted i i if i didn't if i heard you correctly i think you said you want to ask me a question or about something about the some about the finances Right. I mean, d does that does that make any sense to you? I, I'm just curious because I, I haven't really run this theory by anyone. I'm 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 just wondering what you what you think of what I just said. OK, well, you know, this is a safe place and probably the ideal place to do it, you know, where we can kind of brain trust ideas to do that. Eli, I have to do it in parts because it's such a it's it's such a big chunk that you have to like an elephant. You have to eat one piece at a time. So let's dissect it bit by bit. With respect to the dollar, um, what we know is that, and I know people are going to write fight because that's what some love to do. They just nitpick. But if they could just listen to the central point and not nitpick all the little eccentricities and details, what we know is that President Trump took over the Fed and baked it into the Treasury during COVID, or I call it blovid, uh, since 2020. He used that and reverse engineered it to the people's favor against the enemy. You know, he, he reversed a lot of the processes. So the Fed has been baked into the treasury since 2020. As a result, um, we've gotten various reports that somewhere between, give me some rope here, folks, somewhere between 2019 and 2021, they stopped printing 
dollars in new circulation, to your point. So it has been several years since we've seen any new currencies coming out because we're switching. In talking to Jim Willie, I'm referencing him again because he was a treasure trove of information, as you'll see when you watch the show. He's saying that uh, President Trump is going to gold back the new USN note, the rainbow currency, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. It's, it's the new gold backed treasury note and silver certificates as well. People need to remember that gold and silver are going to run together. And you and I have talked in the past about silver is more valuable than gold because gold has an infinite amount where we have it in the US, we have it in the Philippines, we have it in Zimbabwe, the most in the world. I'm going to continue to remind people of that. That's going to come out. Uh, but we have a finite amount of silver, right? And that's mainly for manufacturing, bartering. People tend to think, I think that that you know, gold and silver are about making money, but they're really not. What they're about is a wealth preservation against inflation and a backstop for bartering to control inflation. When you remove the central bank, like President Trump has already done and will roll out to the public later this year, they'll see. That's why when he says, hey, my first order of business is to restore the economy, it's because of the gold and silver standard, it's because of Nasara, and it's because of the global currency reset. Those of us who have those currencies will be the light and the darkness to counteract all of the attrition that we're going to see, right, as we shake things out from the old to the new. So that's first and foremost on the dollar. And then again, Jim Willie was saying uh, that Trump is going to reintroduce or introduce the, the new gold standard and the new U.S. note gold backed by January 2025, right? But as I've said to you before in the past as a, as a reprise, you have to have the dollar in, in we'll use a dance analogy or a dance floor analogy, right? You, you have to let, if you're dancing with somebody and that person goes off, you have to make room for the new partner to come in and, and create a space for them to come on the dance floor, right? It's a, it's a move and counter move thing. So in that analogy, the US dollar is going to have to, it's, it's been corrupt anyway. I mean, like you said, they're propping it up in the market. It's all artificial. There's absolutely nothing backing it whatsoever, right? So consequently, they're going to have to um, have the US dollar take a step back in its inflated quote value and let these other foreign currencies come up in their own assets. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to be talking tomorrow with SG Anon, and I'll share some information with your audience preliminarily ahead of that. Uh, but he talked about the US Treasury bond futures are beginning to collapse. He's referring to the 10 year bond market, right? That's really the thing people need to be watching because as that goes, the economy goes. It's if you look at the charts, and again, neither you and I are financial advisors, nor do we need to be. Right? God appoints the unqualified all the time. You don't have to have a master's degree in business and finance from the Warden School of Business. You just have to be ready and available for him to use, and then he'll he'll move you accordingly. And SGNON falls into that category as well. But adding to it that the rest of the world is offloading US fiat, like you were just talking about. Like Japan, for instance, it's been my contention, Eli, that Japan is hemorrhaging in two areas. They're hemorrhaging in the population regrowth. I don't know if you saw, there was an article that came out that uh, the U.S. has experienced its, its lowest population growth in about, I think it's somewhere between 20 and 30 years, maybe more. Uh, we're almost at 3% a reduction. Some of that is because of this. Some of that is because of millennials not wanting to have kids or people choosing not to have kids because they're afraid to have kids in the world that we're in, not realizing the world we're headed to towards, right? And I, I, I lean to the latter part of that, as you know. Um, and then part of it is that Japan is holding a lot of worthless US dollars and in the treasury bond market. And so they're offloading it faster than we did with the, <laughs> the, the British with the Boston Tea Party. We're throwing it overboard. A lot of these countries are throwing it overboard, not just Japan. But I use them as a seminal example because they were the preeminent economy with manufacturing for so long. So as a result of this, um, treasury bonds at speeds not seen before, uh, you have the coming downturn of the US North American markets. So there's a chart on this index. I don't know if people can see this, but uh, I'll try to show it the best I can from a distance. You can see somewhat of the chart outline. Once it hits a certain threshold of, I believe it's somewhere about 110 to 90 on that, on that index, that market in the futures market, um, you're going to see about a 10% reduction in the bond market. When you see that, you are going to see a stock market crash of some type, whether that's a 50% flash crash correction or greater, 
doesn't matter. You only need a certain percent to see the whole, you know, economy respond accordingly. You're already seeing commercial real estate going in the dumper. You're seeing, you're going to see uh, residential real estate going in because there's tremendous pressure on the the home home manufacturers, right? And the suppliers and then the sellers are already experiencing pain now. It's going to just get worse uh, in the old system. You're seeing the dollar obviously collapse. And the way you know that is just go to the grocery store and the gas station. Everybody can see that and see that, hey, it's costing me more to buy the same stuff. Are you getting better quality? No. Are you getting better quantity? No. So what's the common denominator? The dollars you're holding are worth less and less. That's what happens when you're in a dying economy and you are seeing the end of the central bank system. Central banks only last about 50 years and we're already over that mark. So I say all that to say that, yes, I absolutely agree with you. And these are the seminal reasons why. And so um, folks should be well positioned, you know, in my humble opinion, I'm sure yours as well, in precious metals, even if you just can get junk silver, that's still 90% silver. Prior to Kennedy's assassination in, was it 63? Uh, prior to 1965, uh, silver had 90% containing silver. And then after that, they switched it to zinc. So now you have less than 40% of the coins now made of actual silver. So if you can get junk silver, you can get it at a coin dealer, you can get it at various um, you know, metals dealers. You know, I've just started a relationship with Miles Franklin now and they're a great purveyor of that. They have they are very transparent with their price sheets. They're not hiding anything. Uh, they're very out in the open. But but people like that, for for instance, a lot of good companies uh, holding the right foreign currencies, right? Holding the right cryptos. I know you're an XRP fan. XRP, interestingly enough, today, Eli Judge Torres in New York, I believe, is holding a case. He may very well today, certainly this month, we believe make his verdict that XRP is officially a currency and not a security as the corrupt SEC has wrongly claimed, because we know they're in bed with Ethereum. They've had that monopoly. But I'm looking forward to the firing of Gary Gensler, because he's about as corrupt as they come, which again, people are going to argue this, but they're wrong. He is holding XRP. It's just like a lot of these people, you know, Eli, that say, don't buy gold and silver. The banks tell you not to buy gold and silver, but yet we're watching banks buy it hand over fist. We're watching countries buy it hand over fist. They're going to the bricks. So it's always do as I say, not as I do, right? So holding the right cryptos like XRP, XLM, things that are going to be asset backed. They're going to be part of the new blockchain, ISO 20022 on a DLT, which is digital ledger technology, right? That's trillions of transactions within fractions of a second because they can handle the speed of that. I talk to people all the time. They're saying, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing... My, uh, my Zelle transactions are going faster. My PayPal is going quicker. I'm not saying to use them. I'm just saying people like that. Or, you know, my texter, I was talking to a guy, a buddy in Oklahoma this weekend. And usually when I send him a text, uh, it takes a little while in between uh, the transaction. That happened infinitely quicker, which would suggest to me that a lot of the Starlink satellites are all up in place and ready to go. We know that Zimbabwe is launching another four and then a couple of months from now for their elections namely to, to catch election fraud, but also to prepare them as they go into the BRICS for the new blockchain system. So the argument is being made out there, Eli, I'd like to bounce it back to you and get your thinking on this, but, but there's a large contention that in addition to gold and silver and other assets, XRP is going to replace the dollar and be part of the new digital economic reality and tie also into the new U.S. note we were just talking about. So that's my take on it. What What are your counter thoughts? I um I've kind of backed off. I mean, I think it's quite possible that XRP and XLM will be the new currency, but I I am uh, willing to be surprised. I mean, if you think about it, they they you know I know this is a, a prevalent uh, thought in the in our community that XRP is the one, and I I invested a good chunk of my retirement fund in it and then was promptly scammed. I lost it all, but most of it. But um, I think it's it's quite likely and possible that XRP, XLM, but I don't trust the sources. I don't trust, um, you know, this guy Whiplash on um, 
it used to be Whiplash, and he's now he's Jack Straw, and he might be associated with Ariel. I I don't know. I think there's a dark there's a dark force behind all this, and I know they've they've sold a lot of these uh, scam tokens on Lobster platform. I mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I have a lot of those uh, tokens. I'm hoping that I'm wrong and that they'll turn out to be good guys, but I. I agree with you. I, I at this point in my, um, in my development as a, as a uh, as an investor, I, I, you know, I'm I'm just thinking. I I like to invest in small gold mines, so small silver mines on the stock exchange. I like to invest in Donald Trump's company. There are a couple mm-hmm. other companies. Uh, there's a uh, Tesla company, and there's a quantum computing company i only invest in things that i really believe in but right now the way things are i am i if if i had any money which i don't you know i got kicked off youtube and i'm i'm starting to build up again but if if i had a chunk of money man i would put it right into silver and gold i mean i wouldn't mm-hmm. i wouldn't stop for you know i mean yeah it's it's not bad to have some xlm it's not bad to have an xrp but if if i had a chunk of change now man i'd be calling up my broker and saying just you know send me some uh what do you call those things the uh, silver silver eagles or gold mm-hmm. eagles that's all you know i bought i in the past i bought coins i bought this i bought that i you know i like junk silver too by the way i i i do think junk silver and i I personally like to collect Liberty Standing Quarters, even though I don't really own any yet, but I, I did order 10 Liberty Standing Quarters because when I was a boy, I used to find them in the change and it was terribly exciting. And by the way, I'm, I'm going off topic a bit, but no, it's okay. in 1965, my best friend and I decided to invest in a mint set of silver coins. I said, this is going to be the last set of silver coins. And we, to each other, we were like, we're going to make a fortune on this. And here it is, uh, you know, how many years, uh, 70, 80, 90, 100, you know, like six, 60 years later, it really hasn't, uh, it hasn't gone up to its, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's really true value. There's been so much scamming going on in all, all throughout my lifetime. But I, at this point, I'm, you know, would I buy more dinars? I, I don't think so. I think I, every, every, if I had extra money, I would put it straight into silver and gold. And that's it. Okay. Well, cool. Thanks that's for the just, pers- just personally, just yeah. personally. And, and, but, but that's not to say that if you don't have any XLM or XRP, I mean, I, I'm more, I'm more, um, I lean more towards XLM. I've always liked Stellar better than xrp just you know be, because i got scammed i think but um if you don't have any xlm i think i would get some if you don't have any xrp i think i would get some i think you should have a few dinars a few zim bonds a few you know uh mm-hmm. vietnamese dong but the bulk if i had a bunch of money and i would not invest in like retirement funds where you roll it over i would say you know send me you call somebody up and say send me a roll of uh of um silver eagles Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no for them i i think that's a a very good summation eli and what you're saying and um yeah i've got good news for you on the xrp front to make you feel a little better when when xrp does win this case because we already know they will it's just a question of whether they're going to pay a fine or not i'm leaning that they won't because uh they they've been railroaded by the sec for years now you know and it's all coming out just like with president trump with you know, the J6 and all the witch hunt trials, it's all coming out. It, we're, we're in a season of the wheat from the tares where everything is starting to separate the truth from the, the lies, the light from the dark, to your point earlier. So everything's running parallel and you're seeing this separation. Everybody can see it because there's no war to hide behind. There's no cover story that the deep state can, can manufacture. And that was the whole point of Ukraine was to try to create a war and they're not going to get that. So that being said, when XRP does officially win its case outright, sometime this month, they're going to try to slam it down to about 15 to 25 cents. So for you might be, if you are inclined to be a nice cheap way to get back in and recoup what some of what you've lost. I also might recommend Eli, if you haven't done this, one of the things, ways to mitigate um, getting scammed or losing it is to have a physical hardware wallet. Um, I personally use Descent. Um, Some people like the Razor wallet. That's fine. It's a preference thing. 
but that's a great way to hold those cryptos in your possession. Um, what they do is they give you a 24 uh, mnemonic letter uh, code or phrase, right? You get 24 words um, and they give it to you and you put them in order and then you write them down and put them in your safe somewhere safe away from, you know, getting in the hands of somebody else. But they also have a fingerprint, like the old iPhones used to have the fingerprint. So they have two levels of encryption to try to protect you against, you know, getting scammed or losing, you know, if you lose the password, you still have the, the fingerprint. So there's something you might want to, at least just as a friend, consider down the road. Right. Except that in essence, I mean, really the, the scam occurred because I was conned. So right. I wasn't, I wasn't like, it wasn't that they just liberated my tokens. The, the guy who was on Telegram convinced me that they were Mel Carmine and that there was a big emergency and I needed to move my stash right away. So even if I had had a hard wallet, it wouldn't have made a difference. So sure. I, I, I know that people like those, but I, you know, I, I don't know. On the other hand, you know, people could steal your silver and gold. So there's there's no that right now. I mean, personally, in, in terms of my life right now, I'm I'm about to invest, hopefully, in a piece of land. And I think that's mm -hmm. ultimately probably and I know you are also I think that's probably the best investment because you can live live on it. And hopefully it's it's not as easy to steal as a, a stack. You know, I don't keep a lot of silver or gold around because somebody could, you know, come into my house and say, I want your stuff, man. And or right. what, kind of like they conned me out of the uh, XRP. So, yeah, I think at the end of the day, man, having a deed and having a nice piece of land where you can actually live is probably the best hedge against uh a, a revolutionary time period but on the other hand i think we're going for really good times and that everything will be turned around and uh, okay so let's get back to this dinar thing i'm I'm reading on sure. ariel that that everything is hinging on the dinar and i know you mentioned that the is the iraqi government was going into kind of conference in april and um ariel said january 1st of this year and ariel is still insists that uh that the dinar is going to be the the first domino to uh to to totally destabilize and remove the fiat power brokers what what is your what are your thoughts i know you always have really good uh, ideas about the dinar what what are your thoughts on the dinar right now sure well thanks thanks for the trust um, before I get into that, let's just back up real quick, just to mop up what you were saying about uh, XRP. I just meant that, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you went through that. First of all, I, as a friend, it's but it's but, but on the other hand, you know, if if you live in God's world, you have to say, you know, that's what God wanted me to experience, and 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 so you, I learned from it, and you know, mm -hmm. I don't think I will ever do. You know, people have tried to scam me subsequently, and I'm just like, no way, man. Sure. I mean, so. It, you know, it, yeah, it's it it's it looks like a real heartbreak, but it in essence, you know, it says in Chassidus that the that, that that the greatest love and the greatest blessings come on, on, through difficulties. So, yeah, I yeah, just a side point that everything is for the good in in God's world, in my opinion. I I totally agree. Um, since we're since we're round robining, and thank you for that uh, uh, Hebraic um, lesson there, just to, to get that perspective, because that's you know what you and I do all the time really well is you know we just kind of uh, uh, potluck our information so to speak. But um, in, 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 from the Christian standpoint, from from the New Testament, James uh, it's James one two three it says, consider it a blessing, brothers, when you and sisters when you experience any trials of any kind, for it's the testing and reproving of your faith. So sometimes. We do have to go through setbacks so God can use it as a setup to give us something better, you know, and, and trust and believe, Eli, whether you believe in karma or reaping what you sow, you know, semantics at that point, um, the people that scammed you will get their, their just desserts at some point. They'll be, they, nothing goes unnoticed by God. So, uh, but, it, but again, the, just to your point, if you should decide to take advantage of the price drop with, you know, XLM or XRP, it's a good time to get it. And then just put it in a wallet, and then this way you're—they don't know what you have or where you have it. So, um, right. so to your to your question about dinar, let again, big elephant, lots to chew at in pieces. Um, 
I wasn't aware necessarily that Ariel felt January 1st. Um, I, we know that January 1st was the date that Sudani said that uh, they were going to stop circulating U.S. dollars and force the, the Iraqi citizens to use dinar. But the reality of the situation is that they, uh, and I'm not a big fan of that phrase, but the reality in this case is that they, their situation is a lot like politicians. You have to look at not what they say, but what they do. Right. And, and historically, they do things in April. Why? Because April 1st is the new fiscal year for the Middle East, for the Kurdistans, for the Iraqis, for the Saudis. Right. So when you understand, because I've just been in this a long time, like you've been in life a long time and your experiences, you just you learn patterns. And so I was definitely a fan of the notion of January being a turning point. But knowing being in this long enough historical replication shows that, in fact, April was the turning point for them because it's the fiscal year. They also had to go through Ramadan and Eid, which we just finished up you know, mid last month. So they had to go through all of that. So I think it's exciting now more April than January because of that point of historical replication, right? Um, and that's why they waited to finish Ramadan and Eid before they sent Sudani out to DC to meet. I know they say the Biden. I don't really think he met with him. I think he met with other officials, you know, from the Trump camp, truthfully, just between you and I, that actually can make things happen. Because we know that truly Trump is, in, you know, even Derek Johnson has proven this out time and again that Trump is, in fact, the commander in chief, right? You've seen him in Texas. He met with Governor Abbott, with all the military officials. Whoever meets with the head of military is the one that's really running the country. That's that's the fact, not my opinion. And you've seen video of Trump time and again doing that. So breaking that all down, um, I would say that that's why we saw after Ramadan, Sudani come to DC. He met with Erdogan the end of April, where they signed 26 different agreements. We, we put that out in our telegram. We showed the actual article, so it's not speculation. Too much of that going on. Uh, he is now in a place where they met with, I think last week at the end of the month, they met with the Saudis in Riyadh. And the reason they did that was to continue the formalities of moving forward. And it's, it's part of what they have to do again on the international stage. You know, Saudi Arabia holds the keys to the World Trade Organization known as the WTO. We're still waiting for that to happen. That, that should have happened a long time ago, but we know it's timed for a certain event. So um, all that is to say that on one hand, yes, I believe the dinar is the ribbon cutter, but I will make a caveat, Eli, in saying it's interesting that Zimbabwe has already gotten ahead of the gate by putting their RTGS dollars into ZIG dollars backed by gold. Now, again, we need to watch Nelson Chamisa. He's the people's choice, just like Trump. The countries copy each other, right? We can see that. Once we see it, we see the, the patterns and the, the, the visual markers or the demarcations. We see Chamisa is going to be reelected in their elections August 23rd. And then he has already come out. And I, I just I wish people would do the research that we do instead of having an opinion and arguing on banal points that they really don't know the whole story or even half the story. They, they continue to argue that the bonds will not be backed by gold, but they will, because he's even said in an, in a in a we put in our telegram, he did about two or three weeks ago, he did a billboard. He's putting out comms, again, like Trump does, for people who will catch the breadcrumbs, that they're going to go one to one against the dollar. And they do, and even Ariel backed this up, that they do have the goal to support all of the, the trillion dollar notes, whether it's 50 trillion, 1 trillion, 100 trillion, does not matter, right? So hold on to those notes. And I will further add that President Trump, when he was... Um, on the show, The Apprentice and running that brain trust, he took a contestant aside and gave him a hundred trillion dollar note and was on, it was off camera. He said, and somebody caught it and said, hey, look, you know, right now this is worthless, but hold on to it because it's going to be very, very valuable. Why would he say that? Because he's the architect with Chamisa, with BRICS, with all these other countries when he went on his first term and did the sword dance and he met with the queen and she stood behind him, which was a sign of capitulation met with Putin with the football or soccer ball, you know, Shinzo Abe at the time, the prime minister of Japan, president of Japan, the, you know, they gave him a trophy. All these things were symbolism of countries, you know, going out of the U.S. corporation into the, the uh, asset-backed, you know, gold and silver. 
Because here's the thing, going back to the bond market a second ago, Iraq falls into that too, because what's going to happen is um, when that bond market, that 10-year yield falls below a certain threshold and the feds are, right now the feds are bailing it out. The European Central Bank under Christine Lagarde, who used to be in, who used to be the head of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. To me, that's like going from the frying pan to the fire. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really no difference. It's, you're just trading one headache for another. When you think about it, it's true. But they were able to salvage last week the 10-year bond yield. But I don't think they're going to be able to do that much longer because there's just too much resistance from the good guys. You have the BRICS. The whole entire purpose of the BRICS right now in the next five years is to de-dollarize and get away from the corrupt dollar that has enslaved them and us for that matter. It's not just we have screwed them over, but we've also screwed ourselves over by being in a self-defeating system. So um, I would say with all that said that, yes, I'm watching for the dinar, um, but I'm also watching Zimbabwe. Here's If you're asking me, here's how I see it. I see XRP winning its case this month. Once they do, I just believe that Israel, somehow Israel Hamas are going to renege on that peace agreement because they've done it many times before. We all know that. They wriggle out of things. And again, it's not what they say. It's what they do. Israel will play its part in the game or the movie of, of you know, bombing the secret nuclear power plants in Iran, because that's the only way that Iraq, staying on Iraq, can break away from both the U.S. military militias as well as uh, the Iranian proxies and their government. They need something to, to separate the tie and split the difference. And we believe that will be it. When I say me, we, I mean me and my team that we work with. Um, and then you will see the dinar, right? Then you're going to see China, Taiwan. They have to do their invasion this year because they're not going to come back when Trump's in power because he's going to power up the military. And there's no way they're going to mess with that. So while the drawbridge is down, whenever the Biden is removed, I think that's when they're going to attack, which looks to be the summer, early summer. That will free up the Vietnamese dong to power up in silver and Litecoin, which we've discussed before as a reprise. After that, then we have the elections in Zimbabwe in August. I believe Chamisa will be elected. He'll get in September. And his, he's already said, like Trump, in his comms, the first order of business is to remove the corruption, return the sovereignty of the people. How do you do that? Well, you give them their rights back, number one. Number two, you free them up financially, right? Which is what we're discussing. How do you do that? You release all their resources. They have the most gold in the world. China has just done a $300 million deal to go into Zimbabwe to get at some of their metals. What, may, what many people may not know is, is Zimbabwe is one of the largest holders of metals like um, you know, rhodium and um, man, uh, different forms of steel for manufacturing, which the Chinese are going to need right, to, to become a preeminent power and, and other things. So I would be watching Zimbabwe, I would be watching Iraq, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe between, um, you know, right now to the September timeframe, which what a coincidence that it, once XRP goes, everything else goes, which goes back to, you know, their viability in the new economic marketplace. But hopefully that answers your question about the dinar. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I, I, I just have to compliment you on, on the way you weave in the geopolitical events into the thing. I'm, I'm not I'm just totally, you know, I just have no interest. I, and I, I, I really mean that I really respect you. And I really I learn a sure. lot from you. But like to me, um, you know, the the when you when people say the Israelis, the, there's a different, you know, like to me, it, I think it's important for people to understand that there's a difference between the people of Torah yeah. and the uh, deep state government, that we are not the same. And it's right. it's funny that I, I find myself saying this because there's a, a very when, – whenever you see like a big event um, with Israelis, there's always a Hasidic group that is there. Those guys – that it's uh, I I can never pronounce it right, but it's something like Nikute Nikute It's it's some kind of Hasidic group. There are about twenty of them in the world. They represent nobody, nothing. They are just like, but they dress up in a way so people, you know. And um, the thing that that I you know that I agree with actually with them, and they are considered like the out. They're the outcasts of the Jewish world that we don't 
we don't we don't recognize the Israeli government as being a representative of the Jewish people. If they were truly in, interested in representing the Jewish people, why would they do this to you know more than any other country? Why would the Holocaust have? I'm just saying, like that in general. I think that people and maybe maybe I'm I'm hoping that your community will understand this point because I think you you guys are set up to do this mm -hmm. there's so much so much I I don't call it anti-jewish because there's no j in the hebrew alphabet mm -hmm. I say anti yidden we we call ourselves y yidden yidden uh, because you know because there's no j and and th and that's a problem, by the way, just as an off point with, with the word Yahweh, there's no W in Hebrew. So mm. I I think you're better off saying Havaya. Havaya is mm. is is, you know, we have many names for God, but Havaya is is the word we use to represent God above nature. It has the gematria of 26. But that that's a side point. And, and I don't want to get a sidetrack, but the. People, I see on X, I see all these people complaining about the Yidden. It's not the Yidden. The people of the book have nothing to do with this disgusting, you know, deep state, uh, and, uh, Rockefellian, Rothschild government. Mm -hmm. This is a total scam. The, the Khazarian mafia has nothing to do, nothing to do with Judaism. Right. And I, I also want to say one thing for you to give a, a message to SGNON tomorrow okay. and just tell him that Ellie Weber has so much respect for him because yesterday he came out with with six of the 13 bloodline families that are the real mafia and he even put in parentheses real mafia so people that want to divide us deep i think the deep state that wants to divide us are constantly talking about Gazarian mafia and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and that's not to say that they're not bad dudes but the real mafia, and I, I just, you know, if you could tell SG, if you think of it, just tell him I kudos to him because he could have gone the way of all the other Patriot channels are always talking about the Gazarian mafia and the Yidden as being, you know, the source of all evil. It, you know, and that a lot of these players have dual citizenship. You know, they have United States citizenship, but they have Israeli citizenship. These are not people of the book. Right. These are deep state players. I mean, and it it crosses all all boundaries. It, for example, and I, I know I'm totally off topic. My little brother was the assistant secretary of defense under Obama in charge of biological, nuclear and chemical weapons. I spoke to him two days ago. I said to him, do you still you know, do you still believe that 9-11 happened by, you know, a bunch of terrorists from Egypt? Oh, was it Egypt or Saudi Arabia? I can't even remember. I think it was Egypt. Uh, Egypt, um, I believe. Yeah. He, he said. He said absolutely. You know. He, in other words, they are sticking to their guns one hundred percent. I even asked him about Ke the Kennedy assassination. So, so even within a, a family like that's my little brother. You know that this thing that all Jews are Khazarian mafia is just a, a horrendous horror story that mm. is, I believe, perpetrated by the deep state in order to divide and conquer. Like most most of the Yidden believe that the Arabs are the problem. I don't see it. I don't think the Arabs are the problem. I think the Arabs are our friends. They've been traditionally, you know, Arabs and Yidden have lived together for centuries. So I think the, the you know the the they always want us to look over there and not here but the 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 problem comes down time and time again if you look behind all the surface events but behind Iran behind this fight this war it's it's the satanists against humanity and you know we Christians Jews Muslims you know non affiliated spiritual people you know Buddhists Hindus we're all together on this 
And this, you know, I, I know I'm, I, I really want to stick to the, the economics, but, okay. the, you know, the, the fact that you and I are, are good friends and that we can talk to each other and that you believe in the New Testament and I believe in the Old Testament, Old Testament it makes no difference. It's not, you know, it's not about that. That's what the creepazoids, that's what the Satanists want us to think, that the big picture is about all this division. It's not. We all want the same thing. We all want to be fruitful and multiply and enjoy our families and live in peace. But it's it's these, you know, it, so I I just want to salute SG Anon in advance for t showing the world the real enemy. Yes, the, the Rockefellers. Yes, the Rothschilds. But they're just the surface ones. The ones mm -hmm. you haven't heard of, the Breakspears, the Orsinis, the Medicis, the um, Bilderbergs, I think. Well, Bilderberg is still more, you know, people think of them as like Jewish, you know, Khazarian type things. These mm. 13 bloodline families, the Nudrangata, mm. I mean, people don't even know the word, the Nudrangata, that was, by the way, leaked by Whiplash's cronies. Who, and I I consider Whiplash to be the, the most evil villain, you know, alive. You know, and I actually lost my YouTube channel. I was I, I was on a rant about how evil Whiplash was because he's pretending to be a good guy and he's pretending to be one of us. And there are a lot of patriots like that. And we're finding more and more of these guys that pretend to be patriots are just, you know, gray hats at best. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry I got off on a tangent, no, but okay. I, I just I just want your people to understand that. From the point of view of a person of Torah, that there is that we have no problem with with Christian people. Now we don't believe in it. It's not for us. And as long as Christian people understand that, we can have a very nice relationship together. Well, I think we've proven that's the case, and and uh, and, and that's why we're one of the many reasons we're here. And just just to clarify, like you did for me, Eli, and thank you for that. Uh, is I actually believe in the whole of the Bible, including most of my childhood, I was only taught the New Testament, right? That's common. But as I've matured, I've started to understand the importance of the Old Testament. And uh, so I see the whole side. In fact, I've even had to come around in this, this in, in the whole truth or perspective, you have to you have to learn truth from all angles, not just from geopolitical or financial or health, but also your faith walk too has to get questioned as well. Everything has to get realigned. And I've had to come to the realization as I've delved, delved deeply into it by people who are uh, very knowledgeable in this department that uh, the real true Bible is the Ethiopian Bible, going all the way back to you know uh, uh, you know pre-biblical times. So that was a hard pill for me to swallow to realize. So I've had to grow in a lot of different aspects of my life, much like yourself and, and your followers as well, and I'm sure mine also. Uh, that um, we don't always, we oftentimes don't even see half the picture, let alone the whole thing by any stretch. I mean, it's, there's, there's this indictment in our truth or movement that it's somehow a crime to not know everything. You know, so many people are, are so obsessed with being right and they're not, and it's not about that. It's, it's about winning and locking arms together, helping each other, you know, whether, whether you believe in Jesus or not, Okay, that's a whole separate topic, right? But as a Christian, one of the things that he taught, you know, our our belief in the first two commandments, love him first, have no false idols or gods before him, and love one another. As you can see, we've had a hard time as a society getting one of those, right, let alone both, right? But whether you're a Christian or Jewish or Muslim, you should all believe to, to love one another and help each other. That should be a universal tenet, right? You preach that and you emphasize that in your show quite often. And I, I love that you do that. So, um, yeah, but I mean, I see the point is I see both, both sides of the Old and New Testament, the validity and one precedes the other. And, and oftentimes, if you don't learn from your lessons, you're doomed to repeat them. You know, in our, our Bible study, uh, my big brother Carl has been emphasizing to read one proverb a day because it's about hammering those lessons of instruction and obedience and, you know, learning from those examples that if, that if you continue to disobey your parents or you, uh, you, you try to, as an example, one of the examples is don't cheat your neighbor of the boundary lines. You know, a lot of times 
you know, I lived in the East Coast like you and property lines are very tight and compressed and everybody's fighting for every square inch and they think nothing of moving the boundary line an inch, right? But to that neighbor, it means a lot. And it even goes back to biblical lessons in Proverbs, for example, of not cheating your neighbors of the boundary lines. And so sometimes the lessons we learn as kids, we don't understand necessarily the inherent value of why and practical purposes that's important. But as we, as we get older, become adults, we start to realize, oh, this is why, this is why, these are why I learned these lessons for them to be applicable now. So no, I appreciate that you go into great detail. And yes, I will absolutely pass your sentiments on to SG accordingly. So yeah, thank you. Um, as we close the show today, Eli, as you know, always, we, we end with uh, final thoughts you want to say to the audience and anything that you want to share your musings with today. Just that it, it, it seems to me, I mean, after conversing with my brother, I want to get back to it because I didn't really finish it. But the idea that two people in the same family could have such a, a divergent opinions that we're either going into two different realities or you know, I, I mean, I think that's the case. I, I Or it's possible that the old world will be destroyed. I don't know. I think these people are, you know, it's kind of like it, they talked about in after World War II, there were pockets of Japanese soldiers that were holed up on these islands and they were fighting. And like in the 50s, they were ready to kill you. They, that, I, I you know, at we are we're definitely moving into this new age we're definitely moving into the redemption into the great awakening into the the time to come and uh i just personally see it as i i don't know i mean i'm open to the mystery um and also i i also i want to end with this thought a, a, a ricocheting ricocheting off one of your thoughts and that is as a teacher i was a chemistry teacher and I I really knew my stuff. And I would have these administrators come into my room and I would say to the students, you know, I really don't know the answer to that question. And I would get in so much trouble from these morons who didn't understand. They didn't know anything. So it's so important that we are not, we do not have our egos wrapped around always being right. And that, you know, I think that's a brilliant point that you made that it's it's okay not to know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. And my my sister uh, Judy always says, if you have to choose between being kind and being right, choose kind, and you'll always be right. I love that. <laughs> That's great nice. way to kind of kill all those right fighters and energy drainers, you know, who aren't right to begin with. So yeah, thank you, Eli, for your your words of wisdom as always. Um, and to my audience, I would say to them and to your audience as well. Um, you heard Eli talking about some of the foreign currencies. Like if you have enough in your position, great. But if you're if you're getting into this this movement late and you don't have any foreign currencies or Zim bonds and you're interested uh, in getting some of those, we do have a provider that can help you with that. We'll leave that link in the description. Also, um, something Eli I wanted to share with you in my closing thoughts is I don't know if you've experienced this, but as you as you gain in your well overdue popularity, which which is just a matter of time, and you're not doing it for that reason, but I'm just saying as you build back your your well-deserved following without any manipulation of platforms. Um, I'll leave this with you and with the audiences respectively. We experienced some issues over last week where um, I guess we're, we're building something of a following to enough to a degree where piraters and scammers are now replicating our platforms and putting them on X and on Facebook. Folks, we don't have a Facebook account. We don't have an X account. That is not us. The only place you'll find us is on YouTube, under Chris in, in the real world in my name, my name under Bitch Shoot and Rumble, and on our Telegram group, my name and Club Patriot. That's it. We're not on X. I haven't had an X account for two years, and we know why. I had a Facebook account for three years, and we know why. So if you're dealing with that kind of stuff, just know that that is not us. Please don't sign up for any of their cons or any of their subscriptions, or if they're trying to sell you anything, that is not us. We want to get ahead of it and, and protect them you and ourselves respectively from any potential blowback, which I know Eli, you understand well. And this is the entire thesis and basis as to why we're creating Club Patriot. Talked about it before, but we wanna create a private platform that gets away from these scammers and con artists because it is um, membership based. Now there are two parts. There's a free part where you can just sign up and do like a discord and you can just chat amongst Patriots, share ideas, knowledge, 
that we don't all have. So we can learn from each other. Like you said, not ego based. And then there is a membership based where if you want to start your own business, uh, build streams of income, or you want to get with other business owners, let's say you have a patent for an idea, or you want to build a partnership alliance with another company that's maybe a little further ahead of you in the development, there's that opportunity. We'll also leave that in the description as well. Um, Brother Eli, my good mensch, always great to be with you. Thanks for your knowledge. Thanks for your heart, your humility, and your wisdom. We look forward to uh, connecting with you again in the not too distant future. Thanks so much, John. Always a pleasure. I really enjoyed the time with you. Likewise. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.